Do you want to ping or do you want me to handle it? What's up, guys? We're going to start in just a minute. Yeah, I'll make the announcement now. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. So we'll just give it about a minute or two to make sure that a couple more people join in. And then from there, we're going to we're gonna jump right into it. I want to confirm everyone can hear me and see my screen properly. How's everyone doing? What's up, Ingo, Rossman, Splendid Wash, Skater? How you doing, Drew? You? All right, all right, all right. Yeah, great to hear, Splendid. Having a Splendid day? Uh, wa uh, Wash says everything looks good as a nitro booster, like 4K. <laughs> um, for chatting, you can just use the actual chat from the um the chill zone stage, right? So if you just if you're on PC, you can just go to the top right where you can um show the chat, right? Right on top of Kenny, you'll see show chat. It's like a little chat bubble, and that's where you can chat. Just to make sure that we keep everything in one place. Ah, perfect. Awesome, man. All right, guys. Let's uh, let's get right into it. Hoping we don't have any technical issues. Sometimes in Mexico, you know how things go. Anyways, with that being said, let's go ahead and start off with my introduction. We have everyone right now looking at my screen, looking at my uh, my face, and listening to my voice correctly. I hope. I don't want to have any issues where later on people tell me that I can't hear anything. And if you can't hear anything, if you just see me moving my mouth, then it's most likely going to be an issue on your side if we've already had people confirm that we're good. So, you're so technically inclined for a three-year trader. <laughs> uh, well, some people are good at Discord, some people are good at trading. It's uh, some good at both, but, you know, can't win them all. With that being said, guys, I'm going to go and start with my introduction. I have my notes right here on my chart. We're going to go over these four topics of my introduction, uh, price action in terms of smart money concepts. We're going to use SMC and ICT interchangeably because I would argue that it's basically the same thing and arguing that it's different is kind of just, it's terminology BS in my opinion. Um, so basically just ICT since that's where I learned most of my stuff. I also took a course on SMC from the guys over at Champs Trading, which is Shinobi. Um, he made that group and he's from Steady Stack. Anyways, really, really big traders for options for futures, crypto, and everything. So I got a pretty good, um, I suppose, background whenever it comes down to that, which we're going to be talking about, you know, what's going on with price action, how that works in with so many concepts. What's the difference between so many concepts and, I don't know, like your typical trend lines, your typical RSI and MACD? Why does SMC work for crypto? Which for a lot of people, especially if they learn straight from ICT, they're kind of wondering, does this stuff work for crypto? And maybe some of you haven't bothered to actually take a look. Of course, since we are mostly a crypto trading group, I'm sure you guys have, but I'm sure there are some around here, but you know, still haven't quite gotten into that world. And whenever you look at the original videos, we'll notice that he mostly talks about Forex and traditional indices like the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. So from there, how do you get started trading? I'd imagine most of you are already trading, but I will assume that some of you may be needing that little helping hand in terms of how do I actually you know, do certain things like, I don't know, like translate I guess like a little tips and tricks, right? Like I could show you the absolute basics if I get, you know, a couple of people letting me know, which is essentially how you get on TradingView and, you know, set up a basic chart and how you can take those trades directly on an exchange like Bing X and so on and so forth. But the main thing that I want to talk about and how to get started trading is the little tips and tricks, which really, really help with your workflow and to be able to translate any sort of charting skills into trading skills. So we're going to go ahead and get started right now. We have a good amount of things to talk about. I go pretty fast. So if you want me to go slower, we can go slower. 
I am still sick. So if I, you know, if I ever trip over my words or if I kind of just lose my flow at some point, it's probably because I'm, my temperature is fluctuating greatly. That being said, we're also going to have an active Q&A during the class, which means at any point you can go ahead and just send a message within the chat for uh, the chill, for the chill zone, right? Yeah, the chill zone chat, which you can see to the top right of your screen if you're on mobile, I'd imagine it's something similar. So just make sure to type in there. If you want to type in any other chat, if you don't know where to find that, just make sure you ping me. Ping me or ping Kenny, ping someone which is around here that can help redirect me to your message. And that message can be anything you want. It could be some sort of question about myself. It could be a question about the markets. It could be straight up a trade that you took today or a trade that you saw one of our callers mention that you weren't you know, quite sure how to take. Anything along those lines, I'm happy to answer any and every question. If I'm not able to answer it, um, well, I highly doubt I'm not going to be able to answer it, but if I can't answer it for any reason, then I will make sure I give you the right resources so that you can look into it. With that being said, my introduction, my name is Seb Crypto Trades or Sebastien. I'm from Quebec, Canada. I've been trading for about three years now, actually, pretty much right on the dot. I started sometime in late 2020. I got a bunch of checks from the government uh, whenever there was, you know, this, that stuff going on in Canada with the, uh, you know, the big event. And um, that gave me some capital to get started with trading. And so I invested heavily into my education like not literally in terms of university or anything, but just online. And I invested a lot of time and energy, about eight to 10 hours a day for the past three years, roughly, you know, some weeks a bit less, some weeks a bit more, kind of depends, but it's roughly something along those lines. I have been working quite hard to get good at this. I did a lot of trading back during 2020, 2021. And then from there, I ended up shifting towards NFTs for most of the year of 2022. And then later on in that year, you know, about a year ago, I would say roughly, I got into, you know, multiple Discord groups. I started to understand that I can translate my skills of, you know, cryptocurrency trading, market analysis, all these things into, you know, educating people and helping people actually get into it. Because I noticed a lot of these NFT groups, people are totally closed about crypto. They think that leverage trading is straight up just a scam or gambling. And, um, you know, whenever they think about coin trading, they're thinking about shit coins. So I wanted to make sure that I was giving the right information to people which I felt needed it. And I've been able to help a lot of these people go from literally zero to better traders than I am quite literally. Because as a reminder, you know, we all have 24 hours in a day. It's not quite possible to be full-time trading and full-time educating. Think about your favorite university teacher. He's not going to be able to do his full-time job at the university and do whatever it is, you know, he is teaching about. If he's, I don't know, like a chef, maybe he's not able to be a full-time chef and also a full-time, you know, teacher. Just got to balance things out. And uh, yeah, with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and get into it. I don't think there's really anything else for me to say about my introduction. Um, I'm in some pretty notable groups like Steady Stack and Champs Only. I've been around for quite a while now. And if you have any questions directly about me, any sort of questions in terms of, you know, what my journey was like, anything along those lines, or how I would recommend you get started or improve on your trading, I can help directly in one-on-ones if you want, or just send me a message and I'll gladly help. So that being said, right, price action SMC. So like, why does SMC work for crypto, right? What even is SMC? So SMC refers to smart money concepts, which is essentially some form of, you could say like derivative of what you have learned with ICT, which is the inner circle trader. All right. So ICT, SMC, there's a bunch of these terms. The only thing you need to know is that there's a guy, right, which he likes to call himself the engineer, which essentially created what's called smart money concepts, right? He created this framework around the markets. He engineered it, figured it out, figured out that it works. And he is able to essentially call the markets in a way that most people haven't seen before due to the fact that he's able to have very, very precise entries, exits. He's able to call the markets in a way that's very, very I don't know how to say this, but um, you know, it's almost like uh, witchcraft whenever you first look at it because it's so precise, so, so, so precise that you can use it on any time frame in any asset. You can go on Bitcoin, you can go on some random shit coin even if it has enough data, right? By enough data, I mean just, even just the day is fine um, as long as it you know, has some candlesticks going on and not just like those weird illiquid uh, movements. Uh, you can use it on Forex, you can use it on you know, stocks, anything. That's what makes it great. Right? You're able to translate this into any market and you don't need to change much about the framework. So if you were to try to trade it on crypto right, and you've done it your whole life with stocks, options, futures, whatever it is, you're able to switch very quickly, right? which is great because certain trading frameworks don't allow you to do that. So whenever it comes down to smart money concepts, there's a lot of different things that we could go on about. I would imagine that if you're familiar with it, you most likely have already taken a look at the uh, GBT ICT section. We also have a price action section and an SMC section. They're all going to be, you know, they're not going to be the exact same, but a lot of it's going to be referring to similar things. 
because in the end, it doesn't matter what term you have or what trading, you know, I guess, um, trading um, methodology that you have, because in the end, it's all just the same thing, right? We're all looking at the same thing. We're looking at candlesticks, unless you're for some reason on bars or on line charts, it doesn't really matter. In the end, we're looking at price. So whenever you look at a candlestick, for example, you look at this big candlestick right here, which for me would be gray. As I decided to make it totally grayscale, I made my green candles white and I made my red candles gray to completely remove emotions. It's one of my tricks, which I would highly recommend that all of you get on right now, because if you don't have this set up right now and you're having any sort of issues managing your trades or being more objective in your trading, especially whenever you are in a trade and any sort of trade where you're risking any sort of amount of money, you will most likely have some sort of emotional issue come up unless you're a veteran trader, right? Whenever you're looking at green and red, everyone knows green is good, red is bad, right? I mean, green light, red light, you know what I mean? So it's... um. It gets even more confusing whenever you're shorting because then it can actually mess mess up with your psychology. I've seen somebody talk about this, a veteran trader that's been around for like almost 20 years, talking about this, how it can be really confusing for the human brain whenever you have red that becomes good, right? If you had like a regular chart and you saw price, you know, go down, right, red, it'd be good for you if you're shorting, right? Which is confusing because if you're trying to explain it to, let's say, your, your friend, which is looking at it, they're like, they're like, oh, no, that's bad. It's like, well, no, it's good because you're shorting. So just... A little bit of a favor, I would recommend white and gray. You can do another color if you want. I've seen some people do blue, like very rare shades of blue. It needs to be something which is relaxing, something that's easy for you to look at, and something that when looking at it is not going to call cause distress. All right, of course, it's not going to be as simple as, oh, wow, look, my candles are a different color. I'm a much better trader. But it will improve your trading and it will improve your psychology. All right, so I don't want to go into psychology too much this time. I think we're going to go over it. Um, let's just see. We're going to go over it in about two weeks. Whenever we have our next class, I'm going to go very, very deep into psychology because I think it's the most important topic. Talking about so many concepts is great. Talking about how to take trades is great. But in the end, it doesn't matter because the best traders are essentially like self-psychologists in a sense. They are extremely good at psychology. They're extremely good at working with their own psychology and they know what they're doing. Most of us, we don't, right? We have our life in complete disorder, which is why we have our trading in complete disorder. With that being said, if I were to just get ourselves a nice little example right so how i would find an example for this right there's many ways that you could get one let's go ahead and um let's go ahead and just move this over here so what you're looking for whenever it comes down to smart money concepts and price action right before we get started just as a reminder price moves up right this is an uptrend some people would call it like a, a bullish move but in the end that's just price that's pushing up right and then from here price is pushing down what does this mean what is actually going on in the order book what's actually going on in the markets what's actually going on with the trading, the algorithm which is running the markets. It just means that eventually, whenever they take enough liquidity, whenever they force enough people out of the markets, like you and I, retail traders, eventually they want to run it the other way because they fill their backs, right? There's a reason why we have these really, really weird wicks happen, right? I don't know. If you look at, right now we're in the daily, so it's not necessarily always going to be the best example, but if you just look over here, right? You have this really weird wick, right? We kind of just went sideways for about 17 days. And then we had this really random wick going down about six and a half percent. And then slowly but surely, it does move up, right? And then from there, it moves down. And as you can see right here, let's just draw this. You can see that this candle, even if it was a little bit, it did go below, and which is why we saw a reaction up, right? We also had this candle and this candle and this candle and this candle, right? Now, what does this matter? All right, these are points of liquidity. If I were to just go back right here, you'll notice that if you were to go long over here, let's say you're thinking prices are going to go up, right? So let's say you're this guy over here. The replay, boom. All right, let's say you're looking at price right now and you're thinking, all right, man, this thing is going to go, it's going to go down eventually. Um, it's going to go up eventually, my bad, right? Because we've been going down forever, right? We just went down, I don't know how much. I mean, look at this. This is the, the, the overall bear market for pretty much everything. You're thinking, oh, guys, we're right at support. We're going to have to bounce over here. Let me get along. All right, so your betting prices are going to go up. Now, what do you think is going to happen, right, if you're a typical trader and you want to enter right here? Where are you going to set your stop loss? All right, exhibit A would be this tight stop loss if you just stay on the daily. Exhibit B would be this. Exhibit C would be this. Now, it doesn't really matter where you're setting it because in the end, this is, a, this is accumulated liquidity. The reason why it's, I'm calling it liquidity, right, is because this is where you have stop losses. Right, so this is where there's a bunch of sellers, right? So if you're buying right here, if you're going long at 19,200, right, what do you think happens whenever price goes down to, you know, 18,000 over here, 18,100? You are selling, 
right? If you're buying here and you're selling here, this right here would be sell side liquidity, correct? This is where we have a lot of people selling. Now, are they happy about their selling? No, it's just liquidity is what it is, right? It doesn't have to be emotional. It doesn't have to be, you know, everyone's happy to be selling or buying. You know, it's not about price reaching a point where you're happy to be buying or selling. It's just a fact, right? You set your stop loss here, or you were forced out of your position from a liquidation. For example, over here, if you had 20x leverage, right, 20 times five would be 100. This would be slightly over, so you'd be liquidated. You cannot lose more than 100% of the margin you put in. So in this case, you would lose everything you put in, and this would be a forced liquidation or a forced sell, right? So this makes liquidity, correct? So a bunch of sell orders are happening here, right? Whenever we do reach that point. So let's see what happens. Uh, yes, this is being recorded. I record all of my trades, or uh, all of my trades. Well, yes, I do actually, but I, <laughs> I record all of my classes. So don't worry about it. I'll send the recording right after. So you look at this, right? And, um, and then what do you notice, right? We made some more liquidity, right? We didn't make more liquidity. We have this point of liquidity. And then let's say, you know, this was exhibit A, right? Our first guy. And he decided to set a stop loss down here. And maybe was looking for this move. Now, what happens if we have exhibit B over here? It's like, okay, guys, we're holding support over here. Like the candles are closing at the same place. Let's go ahead and set my stop loss right here. Right. And then, you know, trader B does this. So these are potential trades. I'm just essentially showing you what other traders are potentially doing. All right. This is just a bit of a visualization as I'm not able to show you necessarily like actual orders. There are heat maps that you can look at, but it's not necessary once you understand so many concepts. So what do you notice then? What happened right here? Whoa, dude, my orders. I just got forced out of my trade. What's going on? And then eventually this thing starts running up and you're like, right, this thing ran up a little bit. And then you're like, dude, what the hell? They forced me out of my trade right here, right? This random wick right here just forced everyone out, right? Either by liquidation, right? Which just literally forces you out or by stop loss. So what do you notice? Right, this kind of moment, this is what be called a liquidity grab. And we all agree that if you had your stop loss here, right, and here, I would say here, right, this would be a liquidity grab, this week right here. We are grabbing the liquidity, we are grabbing your sell orders, and what do you think happens whenever they grab your sell orders, right? They're buying. So this is why whenever we hit a key point of sell side liquidity, right, for example, this level right here, we get a huge candle up. <laughs> if you're thinking, well, if there's a lot of sell orders down there, then shouldn't it just go down forever, kind of like this? No, because it's an area where they're adding onto their bags. So every time that you are selling, right, it's kind of like the typical, you know, I guess like mentality the traders have of like, oh, they're hunting my stops. You know, they're, they're constantly forcing me out of the markets, blah, blah, blah. They're, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? They are, um, they're buying the blood on the streets. They're, they're buying your stops, right? They're, they're buying your stops, right? So a lot of people say that. It's like, oh, they keep buying my stops. This is what this means, guys. This right here, this is them buying your stops. So what do you notice that happens after? Right, we get a pretty nice move up, right? About 20% after having been sideways for quite a while, right? In about like a 5% range. Now, where do you notice that we go up after, right? So this is them buying, right? Just to conclude this, this wick right here, this is them buying all of your stops. This is the liquidity they needed. This is the thousands of orders, which allows them to go in with a lot more volume. The main issue with these guys is that they have, let's say, a billion dollars and they want to trade the markets like you, but they can't. Because if right here when we were going sideways, they decided to buy, you know, this would happen. You know, big move up like this. Big old candle. If they wanted to sell when things were flat, this thing's going to just move down super heavily. Naturally, right? Because they have a lot more orders and the order books are just not able to handle that unless there are a lot of orders being thrown at the markets, right? Think about, I don't know, like just general supply and demand. If you're going to a supermarket and they have, I don't know, let's say they have like you know, 100 carrots and they're, they're selling and then you're a whale and you're like, I want to buy 10,000 carrots. They're like, we don't have enough carrots, man. You're going to you're gonna move literal prices for carrots. Like, I don't have enough. Right, I would need to go back to the farm, blah, blah, blah. And what happens if you somehow manipulate it where everyone decides, all right, man, we need to bring our carrots and, and sell them. We need to get rid of our carrots. Right now you have 10,000 carrots available in the markets. Well, now it's easy. You're not going to move prices at all. You're just going to essentially buy up whatever is already happening, right? It's just supply and demand. So if everyone is getting out of the markets, right, everyone's getting forced out, you're able to get in quite easily because there's liquidity. What happens after, right, over here, I'm going to go ahead and just change my preset for this, and I'm going to call it equal lows. What do you notice here 
that happen with the candles, right? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have basically have like 10 candles over here, closing pretty much at the exact same level of about 19,042. This right here is also liquidity, right? Because everyone here, right? If you're a traditional trader, you're going to think, oh, guys, this is support. You know, easy. I'm going to long here, right? They're going to decide to keep on longing here because they're thinking this is support, right? They're like, well, if I get a can of close below this level, then I'm going to get out. Or, you know, I'm going to just set my stop loss right here type of thing, right? Because over here, whenever you have equal lows, it's even worse than just a single wick like this. Because if you just have a single wick like this, most people are going to be looking at it for a stop loss, but then there could be another wick, right? As you can see, there's a wick here, a wick here, a wick here. There are multiple wicks that they could be looking at, right? Multiple stop loss areas. As you can see, these are different prices, right? 18,100, 18,500, 18,000, almost 19,000, right? Over here, this is all at the exact same price of pretty much 19,000. So what do you think happens? What do you think is going on? If they're all setting their stop losses, where are they setting it? At 19,000. So what do you think this is? This is engineer liquidity. So, so what do you think they're going to do, guys? Right? They're going to force you out of your, out of your trade. Right? They're going to force you out. Right? They're going to hunt your stops. Now, before they do that, they want to make sure they can offload all their buys. Right? Because if you remember, this is where they bought. This is where they bought right here. Right? So notice how price came up here and then rejected heavily down. Why did I come up right here, guys? Is it random? Like, why did price come up exactly to this level and then, and then just absolutely just fall? Why did it only go that high? All right. There's a couple of answers. But the main answer is going to be PD arrays or Fibonacci, whatever you want to call it, right? But PD array refers to premium discount. So there's a simple concept within, within SMC, which is premium and discount. If you were to go and buy yourself a laptop, right, let me go ahead and draw a fib really quickly. Boom, 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 over here, right? If you were to look to buy a laptop, right, let's say over here, this is the fair price, right? This red line, this 0.5, right, the mid zone, right, this red line right here, this is a fair price. So this is kind of like buying a laptop for $1,000, right? It's the fair price. It's the fair price that you see on Amazon every day. Then what happens if, you know, damn, bro, we just got supply shortages, the world is shutting down. Now the laptop, because you don't have very many chips, right, for the laptops, now it's like $2,000. You're like, damn, bro, that's a really expensive laptop. Like, eh, I don't know. Like, I guess I could sell it. You know, some people, may maybe with a PS5, they would think, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and buy the PS5 as soon as it's available for, I don't know, $500. And then they notice, well, there's no PS5s available for selling. So they go on eBay and they say, well, I could sell my PS5 for like two grand, right? Everyone knows this. It's just reselling, supply and demand, kind of like the sneakers. You buy a sneaker and it's dropped for $200, you can sell it right away for like $500. Same kind of idea because there's not enough supply, but there's a lot of demand, right? So in this case, this would be premium, right? Because you're paying a premium for it. Now, what if, right, it were to go down, right? What if we're in what's called discount? What do you notice right here? This right here, this red area would be your discount. Now, what does this mean? This means it's Black Friday, right? It's Christmas time. Everyone's looking to buy something and they're happy to lower prices. So it's a, a discount. So everyone's happy to buy the laptop for $500. Right, go to Amazon, you got a nice little 50% discount. Everyone's going to be buying. So notice how if we're in this area, right, called discount, people are ready to buy because prices are, once again, lower than the usual. They're in a discount. And if they're the premium, people are happy to be selling. Now, what if I pull this exact same thing from the low of our trend to the high of our trend. What do you notice? Prices, right, went above into our green area. So this is like, you know, your laptop being worth $1,500, right? More than the usual 1000 So how can we get a more precise measurement of this, right? There's multiple fibs you could use. So if I'm going to go and just pull this from the high to the low like this, I'm going to go ahead and just use this preset right here. I'm going to go ahead and just remove this. Now, what do you notice? What do we have right here? You have the 0.5, which is your equilibrium, right? Which is the fair price, like the laptop being worth a thousand. And then anything over this is going to be your premium and anything under is going to be your discount. In this case, I drew it from the high to the low so that I could see the premium. If I were to draw the opposite, I would see the discount. I'll show you another example later, All right? So you notice how there's a 618, which is where we topped out on candlesticks right here before we had this final impulse up. And then from there, we came down, All right? But before this even happened, guys, before this even happened, if you just drew this, right, you drew your fib right here, what would you be paying attention to? 
right? You need to be paying attention to where the markets are actually going. If you just have a random Fibonacci pull, and you're like, well, I think it's going to go to the 618 because my mentor told me so. No, 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 that's bullshit, guys. You're falling into the same retail trap. You need to know why is price going there. Why is it going there, right? And there's one simple reason, and that's called a fair value gap or an imbalance, right? Whenever you're in stocks, right, if I were to just go into, I don't know, for example, over here, right, if I just look at the S&P, well, this is the, uh, the, this is the NASDAQ features. As you can see right here, there's a literal price gap, right? It's an actual just gap in price. So this kind of thing, you can expect to get filled. Eventually, this thing is going to get filled because it's an actual gap in price. But as you can see, price is trading through everything correctly, right? And then over here, there's an actual just gap. So for stocks, you know, if I were to pull up Apple over here as an example, right? Notice how there was an actual gap in price right here. I'm going to go through this example really quickly, and then I'll go back to my chart. So I have my preset called gap. Notice how over here, we made a gap, right? So this is the 27th and the 28th of July. And on the 29th, we wicked into it, and then we saw a big move up, right? So we did over here, we made a gap, right? And then we filled it right away, right? Over here, we made what's called a volume imbalance. This over here is just the difference between two candlestick bodies. As you can see, this wick is technically touching this candle, right? They are technically touching each other, but the candle body is not, right? So this one, I would just prefer to call a volume and balance like this now what do you notice price right away came into it and then came down so these are areas of interest these are what are called imbalances right and imbalances are points of interest right pois so what would be a fair value gap right it's technically like a pattern between three candles i'm going to go ahead and just i'm going to go and just move this right i'm going to go and show you this example all right so this right here, we got a big impulse up, all right? This move is called displacement, all right? It's basically just a term to say, like, bullish or bearish engulfment in a way, right? It just means there's a lot of people buying. In this case, a lot of people sell it. There's a big move, right? This right here, this is not displacement because this is just sideways bullshit, right? This up move right here was nothing. But this down move, this is displacement, right? Because we are changing the structure of the markets, right? Notice how we were an uptrend, and then right after this candle, we started to move down. So that's how you know that it's displacement because it's just a big old candle. Now, usually whenever we get a big old candle, there's going to be a decent amount of volatility, correct? And this volatility is going to create imbalances, right? Whenever there's a lot of volatility, it can make an actual gap in price, a volume imbalance, or a fair value gap. A fair value gap is going to be the difference between over here, the first candle. This candle right here is number one. I'm going to go and just mark this out for fun. Um, yep, I'm going to go ahead and just do that. All right, so this is number one right here. And then this is number two. And then down here, this is number three, right? One, two, three. These are three candles, correct? One, two, three. This is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, as you can see down here, right? So what do you notice, right? This is the low of the first candle. And then if you notice, right, price continues down, continues down, continues down, right? And then we only make it right here, right? If you were to look at the actual price, this right here would be 21,500. And then the high of the third candle would be 20,500. This is a difference of about a thousand points, right? Or a thousand dollars. And this can be measured right here, right? As about 5%, or like I said, about a thousand dollars. Now this difference in price, right? There's a green zone that you can see. This is an area where only people that were trading on Tuesday, the 13th of September were able to get orders in, right? They were able to get their orders in. They were able to sell, buy whatever, whatever they wanted to do, right? But nobody here on Monday or on Wednesday or thereafter in this case, right, was able to get their orders in. Now, what do you notice that happened after? If I just scroll over here, right, what do you notice that happened after? We move up, we move up, and then we reject. Well, why did we reject there, Seb? Well, this is where you can go ahead and draw your fair value gap with a box, right, a rectangle tool. So I would just draw it over here from the first to the third candle. I would go ahead and just label this as a bearish fair value gap. I'll move my trend lines as they're not necessary. And then notice how this is exactly where we rejected. But Seb, how would you know that we reject right here? This goes back to the PD array, right? If I just remove this fair value gap really quickly, you notice how we already knew we were expecting price to go between this 0.5 to the 786, right? This is what's going to be a premium zone. This is exactly where we had this fair value gap, which is how you would have found it. Notice how this is exactly where we rejected. So you already had an idea of where we would be rejecting. 
This is what's great about smart money concepts. It allows you to see pretty much every single move which could be happening in the markets. It guides you, right? It's a roadmap in a sense. It's fantastic. It gives you the clarity that you need, right? And in every single move, guys, in every single move, if you were to go down into smaller time frames, the four hour, the one hour, the 15 minute, the five minute, you're able to pretty much know exactly what's going to happen next to a certain degree of accuracy, right? Maybe you're going to think that, you know, maybe you didn't expect this week to happen. Maybe you expected it to happen a little bit later or earlier, right? The timing can be a little bit difficult at times. And there's another framework to help with that. I'm not going to go over it right now, right? As it doesn't apply as much to crypto, it still can, but not as much. So what do you notice here, right? Price comes up and then boom, heavily rejects down, right? And then eventually, right, kind of just chops around and it starts to make new structure. So what does this mean, guys? What does this mean? Right. This right here, if you just look at it, you're like, great, Sad, this is cool. I guess like you're able to know what's going to happen next, but how do you actually take a trade? Let me go ahead and zoom in. So as soon as you go into right the 0.5 and start to move above, right, or you just tap it and you start to get signs of rejection. Right, in this case, our bearish rolling gap is slightly above. So I would be waiting for the 618 at the bare minimum. As soon as we hit the 618, I would start to look for clarity that we are going to be moving down, right? But on the daily, it's a bit too high of a time frame, right? You can miss the move. As you can see over here, this move happened pretty damn quickly. This right here was FTX, right? Now if we go on the four hour, we get a lot more information. So what are we looking at, guys? What is the market structure, right? What is market structure, first of all? Market structure is going to be higher highs, higher lows, right? I'm just going to go ahead and keep to that because it doesn't have to be much more complicated. As you can see, that's a low, that's a higher low, higher low, higher low, relatively equal, but it is technically higher. And then over here, higher low, right? So this right here would be bullish market structure because we also have a high, higher high, higher high, higher high. To a certain extent, right, it's kind of a choppy one because, you know, those are how, how the markets work. Um, not everything's going to be pitch perfect, but you do get the idea, right? This is an uptrend. If I were to just draw this, right, like so, and then I just move this drawing, right? This looks like an uptrend. Price is moving up, correct? So this is how you would know that you were in an uptrend. But now the question is, how do you know when we're going to shift down, when we're going to start to move down in price, right? Like I said, you need a displacement. But a big old displacement, right, doesn't give you enough information. You need to have a structure shift to go from an uptrend to a downtrend. Right. And so in this case, this is a bit of a weird one. I'm not going to lie. I don't even know. I don't know what to say, guys, because this is like during a, a bunch of news, like some pretty damn heavy news. So not the cleanest example, of course, but I'm going to go ahead and just continue with this example on the four hours so that I can show you. And then maybe we'll zoom in and find something a bit cleaner. What I will say is that we have this right structure. So low, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low. And then from there, this is slightly like internal structure, but still, I would still count this, right? And whether or not you count it, it doesn't really matter, right? Even if we were to just boom, work with this, and you'd be looking for a market structure shift right here, which would be a strong break below. Notice how over here we get boom, 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 a bunch of candles just breaking, breaking. This is displacement. This is a strong move. How do you know this is displacement? It's a strong move, which is destroying all this previous price action, right? It's bearishly engulfing it, correct? Now the question is, right, how do you know where you can get an entry? How do you get into this, right? At this point, you already know that we are rejecting this bearish Chevalier gap, and you already know that we are rejecting this PD array, right? So you don't need it anymore. You know that we're at the bare minimum targeting these equal lows, right? If you go back to the daily, remember these equal lows, right? We know for sure we're looking to break this, right? Whenever we did, notice this big wick, right? Because some people are buying this because they already broke the equal lows, correct? So if you go into the four hour and we were to just remove these equal lows and just zoom into the structure, you notice how as soon as we had this displacement right here, or if you're waiting for this one right here, right, which occurred here, then you notice that we had a fair value gap right here, right? But a bearish fair value gap right here. Now, like I said, not a great example. You know, I didn't notice that we were right around the FTX time, so I didn't expect a big move, but still, same kind of idea. In this case, right? you're looking at this bearish Chevelli gap, right? You could also be looking at this bearish Chevelli gap, or you'd be looking at, I don't know, like this bearish Chevelli gap. There's a lot of them that you could be looking at. Now, I would normally just be able to tell you, look for a PD array, look for your FIB, and um, usually it's quite obvious, right? In this case, not so much. I'm going to go ahead and show you the one that I would pull. 
And then from there, you're going to be able to get a better idea of which one you should be looking for, right? If I just remove these, right? I would potentially look for right this high right here and then this low. The reason why I'm looking for this is because this low right here is tied to this high, just like this low is tied to this high right here, right? And then from there, we made a new structure. We made a new high, right? This is a swing high, swing low, swing high, swing low, right? Like I said, not a great example, but still, it's there. Go into the one hour. Maybe it'll be a little bit cleaner. I right, kind of see it a little bit more, right, guys? Right, swing high, swing low. So, I mean, you could even technically argue that this is your swing high, but anyways, it doesn't really matter. So, the whole point is that you're looking for a fair valley gap, and the most obvious one is going to be this right here. This level right here is where you have your bearish fair valley gap. Remember, this is the low of the first candle to the high of the third candle for a bearish one. Bullish one would just be the opposite, right? Now, notice that's exactly where we topped out on this weird move. On the four hour, it kind of looked you know, kind of looks like psychotic. I mean, look at this, it's just a random wick. Now, if you go to the one hour and you zoom in, you get a little bit more data, this already looks a little bit better, correct? You already get a bit more. Notice how we perfectly closed into it, and then from there, we just rejected heavily down. All right, this would have been one of your best damn ICT trades, probably, if you managed to have some sort of trailing stop or if you look for a lower level, because this thing instantly just delivered very heavily. I mean, in percentage terms within, let's see, in about you know three hours, it did about twenty percent. So you do the math on that. That's that's pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. Now what do you notice, guys? We have some relatively equal highs, right? Over here, what do you see? You see some relatively equal highs, right? Just like we had some relatively equal lows. All right? If I just bring this here, you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We basically have six candles here, which is why we saw this move down. But then over here, right, we kind of made some relatively equal highs, which is why with this wick, right, we swept liquidity. We forced everyone out over here, which was thinking of shorting, right? If you were shorting over here, right, maybe you had your stop loss at these equal highs. What happens here? It stopped up. And then from there, we see this move down. How do you buy those stops, right? How do you get into that sell order? How do you get into that short? So you could just set a limit order right within this bearish valley gap within our PD arrays I showed earlier. And if you look at the fair valley gap, right? Typically, you would set your stop loss at the high of the second candle making it, right? One, two, three. But you can also set it at the high of the first or at the swing high of the move, right? With this kind of volatility, I might want to just do the swing high. That'd be nice and safe, right? This would be about a 3% stop loss, which means that you could use about, let's say, 30x leverage, right? 50x you can't because 50 times 2 is 100% and it's over 2. And, um, and so I would just say about 30x to be safe, right? Now, why am I going for the highest possible leverage? Because... That way you're able to use less of your own capital. Now, you can go lower just to be safe to make sure that your stop loss doesn't, you know, totally get disrespected and then it goes to liquidation. You can use like 10x, 20x if you want. It's totally up to you, right? If you do 20x, it's around a 50% stop loss. So we can do that. Why not? And then from there, right, this thing absolutely just demolishes and goes down and gives you about six risk to reward. Now, let's go ahead and zoom back out, right? This is the main target that we had, the equal lows. But what else do we have, guys? We have this bit of liquidity and this bit of liquidity right here, right? If we go back to the, the whole theory of stops, right? Everyone would be selling their stop losses there. If they're going for longs, right? This is where they're buying and this would be where they're selling. So we have this liquidity right here. And like I mentioned earlier, we also have this one. Right, and then look, we made this one over here, right? So on and so forth, and this one. So this candle right here, this one candle and literally just like, a day. I think it was less than that, like an hour or two. It took out this liquidity, this liquidity, this liquidity, and this liquidity. And then went a little bit lower. So this move right here, right, even if you were going for the lowest level, which is this little bit, you would be getting roughly about five or three reward, which by all means is pretty damn good considering that it all happened within within three hours, well, four hours, right? Three to four hours. So this would be one example, right, of how so many concepts work. And like I said, we're all on crypto. We're not actually showing you guys anything else, right? So this would be for crypto. You can also do pretty much the exact same thing anywhere else, right? Forex, I can go ahead and pull up any pair. I could pull up any stock. I'm not as good with stocks because stocks are a bit different because of the way that they open and close. They're, they trade a lot less. They have a lot more gaps and everything. But you can absolutely still use it very successfully, especially in smaller time frames like the five minute and lower. And for crypto... So long as you have a bias, you're able to get some pretty damn good trades. 
if we were to get this trade right here, you knew we just took out a bunch of liquidity, right? We just went down very heavily. We broke this level, right? This sell side, and now we're getting a bounce, right? So in this case, right, as soon as we started to get a reaction back here, you could have taken a trade, right? Be looking on the floor and you're like, sad, there's nothing. Of course, you got to zoom in. You got to zoom in, right? Go into the one hour. Now we're actually starting to work with a bit more data. But do you see a proper structure shift in, in an entry which gives you delivery, right? There was technically an entry right here, but it did not deliver, right? And that's because you're getting in quite late on this move, right? This thing's already moved quite a lot. Now in the 15 minute, you already have quite a lot more. So once again, market structure. I'm going to go and use this example. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and uh, shift over to our next topic. So this would be your structure, right? A high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, and then lower high right here. So as soon as this was broken, right, this level right here, I would go ahead and label that as MSS or market structure shift. Right over here, we break this quite strong. Right? You could say this is a displacement. Now, is this my favorite kind? Not so much because this is over multiple candles with a lot of wicks, but it is still a strong move after this immense, you know, crash, I guess. And what goes down must come up. What goes up must come down, right? Eventually, things get oversold or overbought and then things move up, right? So over here, things move down, it move, moved up a little bit. Things moved up, then it moved down. Moved down very heavily, so it moves up. That's natural, right? It's volatility. It's not going to go down forever. It's not going to go up forever. That's why you need to have a good plan. So as soon as this thing moves up, right, as soon as it has this displacement occurring over multiple candles here around, you know, Wednesday, 9th of November at night, and then from there, it starts to move up, right? And then eventually, it gets this pullback over here, right? It gives you a proper swing high and a proper swing low. Now, if I were to zoom in, I would get more info over here, but for now, I'm going to go and just stick to this. So... You already have your market structure shift, so you know that we are starting to move up, and now you're looking for clarity on an entry. Now, over here, there was no entry, right? There was just too many wicks, creating no fair value gaps. Now, over here, once we made this swing high, right, and we start to pull back, notice how there was nothing for us to enter in. So you just wait, right, patience. Over here, whenever we get this break, this is a change of character, it's just continuation, right? Continuation to the upside. Now, what do you notice that happened right here with this? I'm not even going to complete call, call displacement because it's just, it's so weak. But what do you notice? A fair value gap, right? But how do you know this is the right fair value gap? In this case, I think it's like the only one, right? I think it's literally the only one. Yeah. If there were more fair value gaps, once again, you would go from your swing low, right? To your swing high. And then, ah, look at that, Seb. We are perfectly coming into this 0.5 and the 618, right? But before we even came into it, you would have known there's this fair value gap right here. So you're looking to enter anywhere in here. Now, the easy mode is just to set your entry, right? Just set a limit order, right? And then from there, set your stop loss and your take profit and bidding, bidding, that's it. You're happy, right? But you could also zoom in and then wait for an actual change of character, right? A proper market structure shift showing you that, yes, we are going to move up and we're not just going to continue to move down. I'm not going to go over this right now because it's a whole other thing and there's a lot more for me to go over, right? But maybe next week as we talk about psychology and we go deeper. Now, remember, this is the fair value gap. One, two, three, right? These are the three candles. You could set the stop loss of the second one, but I would not advise that due to the fact that we're still within our discount. If you set it right here at the first candle, I would prefer this, right? But if you want to make sure that you're absolutely safe, you would set it at swing low, which would be down here, right? Now, it's like very, very big stop loss, all things considered. And like I said, this is easy mode. You're not able to get the tightest stop loss. If you want to make sure you stay into this trade, you can go ahead and just take it like this. Now, as you can see, this is roughly about two risk to reward, right? But if I were to just lower this to the 618, you'll notice this thing already goes up almost a whole risk to reward. So it's up to you guys, right? But you could be looking for this level as a point of interest because there's a 618 and because there's right here the point which we got a proper structure shift. This is internal structure and that's like a form of displacement. So this is a point of interest, which is why we bounce right here. Now, what do you take profits, right? There's this level, which is called the negative 0.37 Fib, which is a little bit of a cheat code, and it can help you find a target. This will give you about two risks to reward, and this occurred in about uh, like 45 minutes, right? This is three 15-minute candles, so about 45 minutes. Nice and easy. This thing did continue to go up, right? Why did it continue to go up? Well, if you look at the one hour, right, you can notice that we were rejecting these 
breaker blocks right here, these equal lows, right, which is exactly where we went to. And we also found some resistance right here in this bear Chevelle gap, right? Bear Chevelle gap, rejected it, continued to go down. And then from there, right here, we came up and then we went down. So if you were just looking for this right here, then that would have been about eight worst reward, right? If you're looking for a larger target. But of course, there are multiple entries here. Like I said, if you go to 15 minute, right? That was entry number one right here. And then over here, there was another entry before this big move up. As you can see, continuous breaks of structure, a bit of a rounding out, you know, top. I don't know what to call that necessarily. It's just basically weakening from the buying side. There's a lot more sellers and buyers. And then from there, we move down. But where did we move down, right? We move down into this bullish Chevelle gap right here, which is exactly where we went to. And then from there, we move up, right? And within this, like I said, you could find a proper structure shift. The same thing we just found right here, but zoomed in, let's say on the five minute, and then get you proper confirmation that yes, we are indeed going to have this move up. Easy mode would be entering right here. Stop loss sit here. And then, as I mentioned earlier, you take profit could be in this bearish for rolling up, let's say up here. And that'd be about eight risks reward within a couple of hours, you know, about five hours. An eight risk reward is nothing to laugh at. It's a very, very large amount, right? If you risk $1,000, you'd make $8,000. If you risk $10, you make, you know, $80. It's very, very good. Very, very, very good. If you're able to get eight risk reward consistently, you don't even have to worry about, <coughs> about your run rate, right? You could have a win rate of like 10% and still make money. That's the power of win rates. So what else we got, right? Went over my introduction, price action, why SMC works for crypto. This we're going to go over right now. And then how to get started trading. If you have any questions, just go ahead and type them out. We have about 10 minutes left. So, why does SMC work for crypto, right? Why does ICT's methodology work for crypto, even though he's mentioned multiple times that it doesn't know if it does, right? He knows that it works for sure for the stock market, for CME, for futures, for Forex. Let me just explain why, right? Because there's an algorithm running the markets, right? There's an algorithm running the markets, which you know, if you hear that for the first time, you're thinking, what the hell? What does that even mean? Like an algorithm? Like, isn't it supply and demand? Isn't it orders that are moving the markets? I made an entire post, an entire thread about this um, last week, I believe. So just go ahead and check out my channel in here. If you just scroll down into the crypto traders and you go to sub trades, you'll see it was my second most recent post. It was done about six days ago, um, titled The Markets Are Rigged, right? And so I also linked my source with um, the video from, uh, what's his name? Gary Gensler from the SEC, which essentially just explained this. Right? This is a post from Wall Street Apes explaining that 90 to 95% of orders are not actually counting for any sort of price action, for any price movements, which just adds on to what ICT has been saying, which is the markets are run by an algorithm. In other words, the algorithm pushes price down into sell side liquidity to then move it up into buy side liquidity so on and so forth pretty much just forever and ever so that they can make money right fair enough now with that being said over here why does it work for crypto where's the algorithm what is the algorithm i have a bit of insider information for you guys because i work with multiple exchanges and one of the exchanges which i'm familiar with i have information saying that they are essentially the algorithm right an exchange is the algorithm because some of these exchanges, right, especially the ones with the very lowest fees, like 0% or 0.01% or basically just nothing, right? And they have all these different listings and all these different things that they're doing, right, to get more and more volume. How are they making money, right? If it's just 0.01% and you're trading with a million volume, that's only like a thousand bucks for them or a hundred bucks. I mean, right, it's only like a hundred bucks for them. It's nothing, right? And a million, a million volume is quite a lot. So the way that they're able to make money is not by scamming you and keeping all your funds. The way that they're making money is by manipulating price and becoming the algorithm themselves. Why do you notice that on some exchanges, prices move to different levels? And you think, oh, well, it's just a lack of liquidity or whatever. Like, it's the way they... No, no, no. It's all about the algorithm, guys. If I were to go into multiple exchanges, I'm not going to show you multiple exchanges because I, I cannot tell you which exchange it is or else I would just get sued into oblivion, right? If you want to know more about this, then all you need to do is just work with some of these exchanges and just ask. Right? They're going to tell you, but they are going to make you sign an NDA. Right, I'm able to say this, but I'm not able to say who told me or which exchange. So, fun part at least, I'm able to say it. But that being said, right, some of these exchanges, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna name which one, right? But there are multiple ones, especially free ones, non-KYC, which do manipulate price. Right, some of them are KYC and they still manipulate it because they gotta make money. Right, I mean we've already seen Binance get sued for it, 
<laughs> multiple times. Um, so it's not like it's anything crazy. We only kind of know this. But that being said, right, they move price just a little bit to make sure that they get your stops. So if you were to be in a trade, uh, let's say on Bitcoin, let's say over here, right, we're on the Binance chart. Let's say on another exchange, you were taking a long, right, and you say your stop loss right here at this wick, low. Over here on Binance, you didn't get stopped out. But maybe on this other exchange, the wick would have continued a little bit like this, and you would have been stopped out, right? And then price, of course, moves back up in this case, and you're like, what? And then you look at the index chart, which would be this chart. This is index. This is the data from every single exchange. And you notice, wait a minute, this wick that just occurred right now didn't go lower than this one. What's going on? And that's where you need to be careful with your exchange. You can also choose to set your your orders like stop loss and take profit based off of index, right? Or based off of last or based off of a uh, fair price. There's multiple ways that you could set your orders, right? Um, but still, if you're on that kind of exchange, I would just recommend being careful. I can recommend you an exchange. I would not recommend one which does this. I recommend Bing X because they have stocks, Forex, uh, commodities, oh, basically fucking everything. It's amazing. Um, and they're improving their liquidity every single day. And they have the best copy trading from what I'm aware of. But that being said, um, what else do we have? We have, I think we're pretty much just about done. Uh, boom, boom. Yeah, how to get started trading. So whenever it comes down to trading, right, you just need to get used to trading, uh, to charting on trading view, which would be what we're doing right now, which is drawing the boxes, drawing the fibs, understanding why price is moving the way that it is, how to actually manipulate it, and how to move quickly, right? How do you move quickly? How do you find a trade really quickly, like on a five minute, and execute, right? Like this Smarmony concept trade that happened right here, how would you have actually traded this? How would you have been able to get in if you only had about five minutes right here, right? On this candle to get the most optimal entry, you only had about five minutes, right? Technically, you could have entered for a little bit longer, right? But how could you have properly drawn everything out and found your take profit and your stop loss and everything, right, very quickly? That's just experience. So that's step number one. You need to get used to TradingView. If you're still unfamiliar with TradingView, right, just go to my Discord bio, right? So just click on my, click on my face and then just click on the About Me, which is Linktree. So, right, it's a link called Linktree. And it has all of my links. One of them is going to be my crypto trading guide. It's a guide that I made a while ago. It's a very simple guide. And it has some terminology to help you get familiar with what basic trading is with leverage, right? And also spot. So it's mostly for crypto, but it also applies to other markets. It's just not catered to other markets. There's also some links at the bottom. One of them is getting set up on TradingView, which is just a whole video explaining every damn feature of TradingView so that you can get very familiar with it, right? You can also do it on mobile. You can do it on PC. You can get the application like I have or just go on the website. And then from there, I'd recommend you look at the patterns video, right? So the basic technical analysis one, so that you can get familiar at least with what most people use to trade. I would not recommend looking at it and then literally just taking it as the information you're going to use to trade. Look at it so that you can get that information and maybe practice for fun. Maybe go on the daily and then draw some patterns. Think, oh, look, this is a, I don't know, like this is a bull flag right here because we have this move up and then we have this and this. And then over here, we have our target. You know, you could draw this for fun and then practice. You can always do that. Right now, but that being said, after you've done this, right, then I would recommend to start to look into smart money concepts. There's multiple ways you can do this. We have a whole section on it, but you can look straight from ICT's YouTube channel. You can find other YouTube channels. You can go ahead and work directly with me. I coach people on bettering the strategies and learning this. Um, you can just ask me a question. You can, there's so many resources, guys. It's, it's free. It's out there for free, right? But if you just go into, our section, there's going to be multiple resources that you can find uh, where you're going to get more than enough information. And then what do you have to do? Go back to step one, guys. Apply it on TradingView, right? Apply it all on TradingView. Draw the boxes. Like everything I just did today, just practice that. And then how do you get started trading? Get on BingX, go to the demo trading, which is on perpetual futures called the VST trading, right? It's with fake money, but it applies the exact same as regular trading. And then you're going to be able to, surprise, surprise, practice your trading, guys, right? Let's say you found this trade today. Said this five minute trade and you wanted to practice it, right? You already got used to trading view. You already got used to drawing, you know, smart money concept, you know, based trading. I don't know what to call it. Basically, you got used to charting based off of smart money concepts. And then what's next, right? Actual execution. So, how do you practice execution? You start with demo trading so that you get familiar with an exchange like Big X. And then from there, you can go ahead and say, okay, well, I want a short right here. I want to set my stop loss over here. And I want to target this low over here, right? 
And so you know your risk to reward is, you know what your entry, stop loss, and take profit is. And then from there, all you have to do is just practice. Now, once you practice and you're familiar with an exchange, throw some actual money on it so that you can learn emotional management. That's what we're going to talk about in two weeks. Emotional management. It's very important. It sounds funny, but it's, I'm serious. It's very important. You need to manage your emotions. And if you, if you have the best strategy in the world, even if you have a robotic strategy, if you're not able to apply it robotically, which by the way, nobody can, you just learn to manage your emotions, you won't be able to make money unless you can actually manage yourself as a human. Right? And that's, that's probably the best alpha I'll, I'll, I'll ever give you guys. Like seriously, it's something that people just don't talk about enough. Or if they do, they don't really mention how important it is. If you're not able to manage your emotions, guys, you're going to suck at trading forever. If you're not able to manage your life and, and actually you know, improve on your life, if you're just trying to improve your, on your trading, you are thinking about it wrong, guys. You're never going to make money trading. I'm sorry to break the news, but I'm serious. You need to get your life together. All right, there are certain degenerates which just live like absolute you know, ridiculous lifestyles, just absolutely not taking care of themselves and they still make a bunch of money. But still, look at them. Do you really want to be like them? Or do you want to be like someone which really takes care of themselves, which has proper habits, which goes to the fucking gym, right? Which, I don't know. You get the point, right? So you need to get all of your pillars in life actually on check so that you can get your trading on the right track. Cool, guys. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll give you guys more tips in, in two weeks. All right, I don't think there's really much more for me to say now. Um, there's a lot more shit I can go over, but you know, once again, I can just go for hours and hours. I think we did pretty good. I didn't see any questions today, but it's all good. I think you guys probably have a better idea of my style and how we do things. If you have any questions for me, just go ahead and send me a DM or just go ahead and ping me in any chat and I'll gladly answer your question. If you want to work directly with me, just go ahead and check out my link tree and you're going to be able to do that. And um, yeah, looking forward to the next class, guys. Make sure to get my ping within my channel, which is called the Sub Trades channel, right? So just go to Crypto Alerts, which is under our VCs and make sure to get my ping so that you can get all of my analysis, all of my calls and all that good stuff. I'll be seeing all of you very soon. And uh, yeah, thank you all for coming. Yo, appreciate you, my friend. Thank you very much, man. Awesome class. Absolutely, man. Looking forward to the next one. You got it, man. Yeah, thank you for coming, Splendid. Zane, Steel, Rossman, Wash. We'll be seeing all of you soon.